Here I'm going to show you some of the various tapes, sprays and paints that are used to secure and colour radio mics. None of these things were originally made for this purpose. Most of the tapes here are intended to secure bandages and dressings, but hence they are totally skin safe and all hypoallergenic. This is Transpore, the go-to tape for most scenarios. It's the stickiest out of all of them and can easily be ripped to length. Some more sensitive performers may find Transpore a bit too sticky, especially if they don't move about or sweat a lot. Applying and removing Transpore to the same place may be sensitive for some performers. If this is the case, I would suggest Lukovix. Sometimes I might start with Lukovix if I know a performer doesn't have the most movement heavy track. Since it's less sticky, it's easier to remove. Blenderm tape is also an option for people who find Transpore too sticky, but you can't easily rip Blenderm, so instead of carrying a pair of scissors everywhere, I tend to try Lukovix first. I do also sometimes use Blenderm to make double mic rigs if Hellerman isn't available. Some people use Micropore, but I found it tends to absorb all the sweat and turns into a gloopy mess. If Lucafix and Blenderm are still too sticky, Micropore tape can be used, however it usually falls off pretty quickly as it's not very sticky. In this scenario I'd usually try to alter the mic fitting so that it doesn't require tape to stay put. For securing ear hangers, you can use toupee tape. This very sticky double-sided tape can be attached to the underside of the ear hanger. This is Tegaderm and this is Opsite FlexiFix. Both of these come in sheets and are more of an adhesive transparent film than a tape um, that can be a good option if you need to secure a mic as invisibly as possible. However, they are expensive and quite a faffed fit. The flexi fit is more matte and the tegaderm is a bit more shiny, but both can be made almost completely invisible using a bit of powder. If a performer is particularly sweaty or moves a lot during the show, transport tape might not be enough to keep the mic cable secure. In this case, using a skin prep wipe can be an option to wipe the skin before applying the tape. Skin prep is also a good option to try for people who have sensitivities to tapes as it creates a barrier between the skin and the tape. Another option is Tenso Spray, which is an adhesive spray that when sprayed and left to dry for a minute or so creates a sticky film on the skin. This is usually my last resort option because it's so sticky and being a spray makes everything sticky. Whilst mics these days tend to come in a variety of colours, you won't find one to match every hair or skin tone. You also might want the portion of the mic cable that is fitted in the hair to be a different colour to the portion that lays on the skin. For this, there are several options. For mics such as DPAs, MK2s or Countrymen, you can use alcohol pens as a fairly permanent colouring solution. I like to use Windsor & Newton Pro Markers, but some people like to use Copic brand alcohol markers. You might want to clean the mic of any grease or residue before colouring the mic with a Zoff wipe. Zoff wipes are magical, skin safe wipes that seem to get rid of anything off of anything. If you're feeling particularly nice, you can offer one of these to your performers to remove any sticky tape residue on their necks before press night drinks. If you're using mics that have a shiny coating, for example MK1s or boom mics, alcohol markers won't colour them. For this you can use acrylic paint. I like to use Warhammer acrylic paint because it's quite thin so it mixes well and it goes on nicely without clumping. Before you paint the mics, use an emery board or medium fine sandpaper to roughen the mic just to take off most of the shine. You can then clean the mic with a Zoff, paint with acrylic and then I like to seal the colour with a matte lacquer. I find the colour lasts better using the lacquer but it will still need retouching fairly regularly. Using acrylic paint is a great option for any mic if you want the colour to be non-permanent, as it's easily removable with a Zoff wipe. You can also use leather spray paint or nail varnish to colour the mics, as it's quite durable, but I find suitable colours pretty difficult to get hold of. Colouring the cap of a mic can be difficult as it's a hard, shiny plastic surface. For this, I would tend to use a small strip of micropore, then colour that. Alternatively, I've recently turned to using Hellerman 2 as a hard-wearing option.